All right, so this is a tutorial on how I replace the thumbsticks in my controllers. Um, I got a tutorial online on YouTube from a uh, poster called Rasputin, who posted his instructions in Russian. So I took what I learned from him and expanded on it. Um, so I'm going to show you what I did to replace the thumbsticks on my controllers that um, I think it's a little bit easier, and also in English. Um, so if you try this, you do this at your own risk. Uh, there is a potential that you can break the controllers. Um, but if you're like me and you had RMA controllers uh, five times like me, or you're uh, out of warranty and Valve told you that uh, they weren't going to fix your controllers anymore, um, the only option really is to try to fix them or buy a new pair like I did. So I actually ended up buying a new pair for $300 and then learning how to fix my controllers uh, so that I wouldn't have to do that again, um, which was... Um, kind of annoying um, so um, on the community hub there are about uh, 196 comments um, and 13 pages of people talking about controller drift um, so it, it seems to be a prevalent issue um, with uh, people who own the Valve Index um, the latest comment just posted a few days ago um, to check controllers, you can go into your devices, controller settings, and there's an option that you can uh, run a diagnostic on your controllers uh, called Test Controller. And over here, you can test your joystick and your buttons. Um, you can also select on the bottom left hand side uh, which controller you want to test. Uh, so over here, I am testing my controller and um, one of the issues I had with this controller is that I couldn't push the uh, joystick all the way to the edge. Uh, at least it was kind of intermittent um, and, and some games I couldn't run really fast, which, um, which sucked. <laughs> and um, also I had drift, so as you can see I let go over here and it, uh, the controller is not recentering. Um, which is, I believe, is the uh, problem a lot of people have with the index controllers. After a while using them, I have, I've had problems every like two or three months with mine. Okay, so these are the thumbsticks. Um, on the left, you have the uh, new one, which is uh, metal. And on the right, you have the old one, which looks to be made out of more plastic. Um, I don't know if every one you order is going to be uh, made out of metal. So I ordered this on AliExpress, uh, part number FJ06K-S. Um, you can type that part number in AliExpress. Hit search. And you have a uh, whole slew of options. So once again, I don't know if every single one of these that, uh, that you'll get is metal. Okay, here is the uh, potentiometer on the side of that joystick. Um, so there's a little plastic part right there and that starts to erode after a while um, as it's rubbing up against the shaft um, on the joystick. So there's that shaft um, so that uh, both those pieces are made out of plastic so eventually they um, uh, tend to wear out and um, calibrating your, your thumbstick doesn't really seem to work or anything you do because it's a mechanical problem. Okay so here's the process for taking apart the controller so I, you can take a screwdriver something small uh, and um, kind of lift the corner. Uh, from this controller and then I have this wedge tool Just carefully take it apart from the uh, bottom first because there is a ribbon cable at the top so you want to uh, work your way from the bottom of this uh, controller okay um, there is the ribbon cable that's for the uh, trackpad Detach that uh, ribbon cable to remove the cover. 
Okay, over here there are about uh, six screws. Um, they're all T5 uh, Torx screws. Um, there's one screw hidden by the pressure sensor underneath the trackpad, which I'll show you in here in a minute. So uh, all these screws so far are all the same with the exception of the two screws on the um, knuckle strap. So those two screws are the only different ones. Um, they, they look like wood screws. Okay, over here I'm lifting the ribbon cable for the uh, trackpad uh, pressure sensor um, so that I can uh, pull it out. So I pull out that ribbon cable and then um, that, that, that sensor is uh, actually glued on there so you have to um, grab something. So I have this uh, tool here and I, I wedge it out of there from the back. And you have to do this really gent gently because um, you can snap this pressure sensor. All right, and there is the screw that's hidden underneath there. That you need to um, take apart this uh, assembly. Okay, so I'm putting my finger on that spring as I uh, take out that uh, knuckle strap um, just to make sure that spring doesn't go flying. That yeah, might be hard to find. Once again, these two screws are different from the other screws that I took off previously. And you, you can tell they're a little bit different. They uh, have wider threading. They look more like wood screws. there I'm lifting up that spring um, make sure you take note of the position of that spring before taking it out that's where you know how to put it back and that's the uh, plastic ratchet assembly for the wrist strap or the knuckle strap okay now you have to carefully pull this out and not all the way because there are two ribbon cables um, so right here you have the uh, trigger ribbon cable and then down there you have another ribbon cable that's for all the other electronics in the controller. So I'm using my tool again here to pry that uh, ribbon cable loose. Okay, um, now this thumbstick, you have to carefully pull it off um, because there's a ribbon cable that's for the capacitive touch. Uh, the first control I ever did uh, actually broke uh, that um, ribbon cable, uh, but since then I learned how to uh, take this apart without breaking it, so, but you have to be really careful with that. Um, so you have to take off this other assembly down here. Um, so you take off this ribbon cable, which is for the uh, thumbstick. And um, there's a couple more screws over here you have to uh, undo. And these screws, I believe, are a different size, so you might want to keep those separate.
right, so three screws. pulling off this last ribbon cable and I probably could have done that before I took off the screws but uh, whatever all right and I pull off that thumb stick um, there you have the board free and it's a good idea to remove that lower assembly too because it gives you more room when you uh, try to unsolder these solder joints right here uh, so there's that assembly you can see the thin ribbon cable going to the uh, capacitive touch on that thumb stick um, it's all one piece so there's no real easy way to remove that thumbstick without taking apart this lower assembly. Um, so this stuff right here is what I'm using to unsolder these, this component, uh, this chip quick stuff. Um, the, the solder they use on here is unleaded, and it's also a double-sided board, so it is a real pain in the butt uh, to try to get all the solder off of there. So what uh, this chip quick stuff, it stays molten longer than uh, the unleaded solder. Um, so it allows it to uh, attain that melting point for a longer period of time. Um, so right now I'm putting the uh, flex on the uh, solder there. And I'm adding this quick chip stuff, so you just kind of um, try to bridge those joints the best you can, and um, rub this stuff all over the, that, those solder joints. I'm also using a solder tip that's a wide tip, so you want to use a wider tip because it uh, um, it'll transfer that heat faster. So over here, I'm using the airbrush uh, paint booth to extract the fumes uh, from my room that I'm working in. Um, you wanna make sure you're working in a well-ventilated area or have something to extract the fumes if you're um, using this stuff. Okay, right over here, I'm heating up uh, that quick chip me to release that um, old joystick one pull instead of trying to uh, unsolder each pin. Um, over here I'm using wick to clean up the uh, solder joints and um, get all the solder out of those uh, joints. There's the board with all the solder removed. And I'm cleaning off the board with some alcohol. I'm gonna clean all the flex off of there. Okay, here is the joystick or thumbstick. It can only go in one way. Uh, so you don't have to worry about uh, doing it wrong. You just have to make sure it's on the right side of the board.
uh, just re-soldering the uh, thumb stick on. And once again, I'm cleaning all the flux off with alcohol. Okay, now to put everything back together. bottom assembly and place it on and put those screws back in putting this small ribbon cable back for the thumbstick and also that bigger one okay I'm reattaching the trigger button my ribbon cable and this other ribbon cable so I kind of hold that uh, yeah, other lower ribbon cable in place of um, my tweezers and then I use my thumb to push it in. Okay, there's not much space to work with down there. There's a small ratchet assembly for the knuckle strap and the mount for the uh, trackpad pressure sensor. just using the glue that was already on uh, this trackpad so I'm not putting any new glue on there it's still sticky carefully putting back that uh, ribbon cable back in for the pressure pressure sensor spring which is um, a little bit tricky to get in there okay right here I'm inserting the knuckle strap back in before putting that spring on um, at least this is how I figured out how to do it um, I'm guessing the factory has uh, an easier way to put the spring in but I haven't figured out an easy way it's actually kind of a struggle So once I have that uh, knuckle um, strap back in, I lift the spring over the uh, metal piece of that knuckle strap and snap it in. Okay, and there's the spring uh, back in position.
putting back the trackpad ribbon cable. Snapping the cover shut again. Here I'm running the diagnostic again, uh, testing my uh, thumbstick. Um, the capacitive touch works. When I push down on the uh, thumbstick button, that works. Thumbstick position works. Everything is going to the edge and making sure nothing drifts which it shouldn't. Okay, my buttons work, the capacitive touch works on all the buttons. Grip force works. System button, capacitive touch, this is the system button works. Trigger, capacitive touch on the trigger works, and the trigger pull works. And the trackpad works, and even the pressure sensor on the trackpad also works when I push down on it. Force. Okay, and that's it. Thanks for watching.